Hey, hey, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about leadership scenarios in the school and how you as a leader should deal with different scenarios. Hey, so once again, uh, the whole goal of all these videos is to really develop your character and your leadership. All right. So I really hope that after watching these videos, you can get a better idea of, of what leaders would do and how you as a leader in the future should be acting. Now, real leadership, once again, is not about a title but it's really about who you are. You could take away the title of a leader and they would still be a leader because of their values and how they present themselves as people. All right, so I truly hope that you can get a lot out of this. Hey, um, shameless plug here, but these videos take hours to make. So if you find this content useful and you haven't yet subscribed yet, hey, I would really appreciate it if you could just hit that subscribe button and just really follow us on this journey of teaching life skills. All right, awesome. All right, here we go. So today I'm going to talk about three different scenarios that I find so common um, in the school when it comes to leadership. Okay, so dealing with failure, group projects, and what to do if your friends or friend is making a bad decision. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, here we go. Number one, dealing with failure. So here's my personal story. Senior year, I was a track runner and I and my top race was the one mile race. And uh, I actually had the high school school record of our school uh, when I graduated. So there was a lot of expectation put on me every single time we competed against another school. And um, so long story short, this was after my school record race and I had a very low time and uh, I was facing off against another school. Now their best runner had a worse time than me. So going into the race, I already knew, hey, I have a really good chance of winning because my time is faster than his. So as you can imagine, we run the race right at the end the last 100 meters of this four lap race uh he pulls right in front of me and he beats me and uh it was pretty disappointing not just in me but everyone on our team because everyone was watching and, and cheering us on and and i lost now um all i remember is okay so i don't remember everything but all i remember is he turned around and he said something to the tune of nice try now, I don't know if that's actually what he said, but in my mind, that's what he said. Now, obviously, as an emotional high schooler who is so cautious about his um, reputation and, and I just lost, um, I didn't take it well. And he reached out for a handshake and actually didn't shake his hand. And I thought that was the end of it, right? Like we both went our different ways, et cetera. Well, long story short, fast forward six years later, I was at a professional networking event and this is after college. And here I am and I'm introducing myself to different people and I see this guy I don't know. So I just pull out my hand and I try to shake his hand and I go, hey, how's it going? And I tried to introduce myself. Long story short, his first words out of his mouth were like, you still don't remember me? I'm like, I, I actually don't remember you. And um, he brought up that race and he said, you know, I was, I had so much respect for you. And the moment I beat you, I was so happy. And when I tried to shake your hand, you didn't even shake my hand. I, I actually lost all my respect for you. So, wow, that was such a great learning experience for me, though it was, I was so shameful and I was so hurt from it. Uh, that was a reality. And as a leader, you have to be careful with when you deal with failure. Now, my best advice to you here is, um, so what did I say back? So after he said all that, well, I said, number one, Hey, I'm really sorry for that. Um, I was, uh, I was in, a, I was a different person when I was in high school. Uh, and it's definitely not something I'm proud of and something that I really regret. So pretty much I asked for his forgiveness and, um, and he, and you know, like he, he also understood that was from a long time ago too. Uh, but though he forgave me in my head, I always thought to myself after that moment, wow, be careful with how you deal with failure. Cause it doesn't just affect you, it affects all the people around you. And I didn't know as a high schooler. Okay, so now as we go on here, um, so some things to keep in mind, everyone loses, every person, at some point you will lose. That's just life and that's okay. Number two, it's just one game and one event. So don't take it personally and don't let it affect you too much. Once again, your loss doesn't define you. How we react in tough times is who we really are. Keep that in mind. Uh, if you're just winning all the time and you treat everyone well, that doesn't say much, but if you're losing and you still treat people well, then that says a lot about you. Think about what you would want from the person that you just beat. Think about it. If you just beat someone and you turned around and you said, Hey, thanks for the race. How would you want them to treat you? Think about that. So put yourself in that situation and then you can make the right decisions. 
All right, so how to handle as a leader, congratulate the person genuinely, wish them well, be happy with your life, no matter if you win or lose, be happy. You have so much to be grateful for. Show appreciation for all, uh, uh, for those who have helped you get to where you're at. Even if you lost, go up to your coach and say, hey, thanks so much coach for helping me out. Um, even if you lose an election, thank all the people who have helped you even run or even try to go for that position or whatever you're running for, all right? So we've all dealt with it. Look ahead and know that there's so many more chances, everybody, for you in the future. Don't be discouraged. Fight on. All right, number two, what do you do if someone in your group doesn't do work? This is so common. And I'm going to do a seven-step process in a moment. But some things to keep in mind. Number one, constant communication is key. Don't wait for the last minute or else everyone just gets stressed out. Plan ahead. Be proactive. Text and email them for updates. Number two, everyone's on a different schedule. So you may have a lot of time in your life to work on this project, but someone else may not. We don't know what's going on in their life. So keep that in mind. Do things early. Don't wait for the last minute. Number three, uh, expectations. So just make sure they know what they, they need to do before that date, whichever thing that you uh, suggest. All right. Create a plan for everybody. Now, seven steps. All right. So if you're taking notes, please write this down. This is super helpful. Number one, I would say get each other's contact info early. The moment you know you're going to be a group, get each other's contact info um, early. It could be via phone. It could be right, group chat, group email, whichever you prefer. But get everyone's contact as a leader. Sometimes the teachers have you do that. But sometimes if they don't, you do it on your own. All right. It's going to really help you out. Number two, propose a timeline and plan that everyone agrees with. Don't just propose it and say, hey, here's what we're doing. No, make sure everyone just talk to everyone and say, hey, is this reasonable? Is this good? How's your schedule? Can we do this? And if they agree, then cool. We all agree. Number three, check in with everyone. Don't wait for the last moment, but daily. Hey, how's it going? Do you need help with anything? How's this coming along, et cetera? Check in with them. Don't wait till the last minute. Number four, be flexible and understand that everyone, once again, life happens and sometimes they can't pull their weight after all. So help each other out as needed. Try to finish things early. Extra time to look over stuff is good. So it's lower on your stress levels. If you know you're gonna have to do something eventually, might as well do it early. And number six, step in is needed. This is what leaders do. They don't just pull their own weight and say, all right, and you give me your stuff. No, they put things together. They add in some extra work. They add in some details and they help their group out uh, for success. And finally, number seven, when you're done, individually or as a group, thank everybody for working alongside you and be like, hey, that was awesome. Thanks for working with me. I, I had a great time. Send them a note, send them an email, send them a text. That really goes a long way. So seven steps on how you can handle so being proactive and making sure that in the end, no one's blaming each other for not doing work, right? Because that's what I see happen a lot. Remember that every opportunity to work with others, doesn't matter if you like them or not, or if they're good or not, it's a learning experience and it's going to help you grow as a leader. So keep that in mind. What do you, oh, so last one, what do I do if one of my friends is doing something wrong? All right. So cheating, drugs, alcohol, being a bully, anger problems, or bad influence, or hanging out with the wrong people. These are all some common examples that I've heard of in school. All right, so this whole idea of snitches get stitches, I'm pretty sure you've heard of it, but let's really dissect that because we all know what it means, right? So if you snitch on someone, you're right, they're gonna come back after you, right? And, and usually that scares people so they're not gonna snitch. But if you really think about what that means is, it means number one, mind your own business. Number two, pick your peers over authority. Number three, don't tell people what to do or how to act. And number four, stop caring for others. Think about that. Just look at that real quick, those four things. That's really what snitches get stitches mean. Is that what leaders do? The answer is no. I'll show it to you again. Leaders don't mind their own business. Leaders don't pick their peers over authority. They do what's right. Leaders don't tell people what to do and how to act, or they do tell people how, what to do. That's what leaders do. And leaders don't stop caring for others, all right? So what, what do you do if you come across a situation like this? Well, here's a great quote. Great leaders do what's right, not what's easy. Right. So you have to do what's right and you have to do it for that person. Now, some things to keep in mind. Number one, it's our job to say something, not to change someone. All right. So don't have that huge responsibility. Oh, it's my job to, uh, to help this person stop doing this bad habit. No, it's your job to say something and to get them the help that's needed. Uh, number two, you are not alone in helping someone. There are so many resources out there and people who can help. So don't just think that this is my battle. It's my job to change them. I need to make them my focus. No, you're not alone. There's other people out there like teachers like me and or support systems around you. And number three, speak up early. Don't wait. If you see something, even an early habit forming, that's not good. Speak up early because that's your greatest chance of helping someone versus waiting till they keep making these mistakes and then they can't really go back. 
All right, now quick disclaimer before I give you advice. Not all situations are the same. Tread carefully, consult a caring adult, and be adaptable and patient. They may not change it immediately, but eventually they will, and you have to believe in that. All right, so how to handle it as a leader. Here we go, Here, here's my best advice for you. Number one, have a game plan. Don't just immediately try to solve the problem. No, have a game plan. How's this gonna work out? And seek professional advice from teachers from and from parents. Just seek advice. Don't go through this alone uh, because most likely it's gonna be a lot bigger situation and a longer situation than you actually think because we care about our friends and we've got to help them. Um, the next thing is talk to the person. And I put some asterisks next to that because you need to figure out what's best. If it's one-on-one discussions or if it's you and a friend talking to a person, right? So you need to figure out what's best. Not every situation is the same. And here's the most important one. Don't attack them. Don't start off with the problem, but let them know first, Hey, um, can we talk? Cause I care about you a lot and I just want what's best for you. And I, and I know you, like, I trust you and I know you're a good person. I just, come on, especially if you have history, that, that that's your best way of helping someone. If you already have a relationship with them. So don't attack them, but start with what you know first. And then firmly address, like at some point, like you've got to firmly address the bad behavior and you can't beat around the bush and kind of say it. No, you just gotta say, Hey, something that's been on my heart lately that I want to tell you is boom. So I've noticed blank. Um, I'm, I'm a little concerned because of blank, right? You've got to firmly address it. And then you've got to follow up with them. So after that conversation, like follow up and say, Hey, thanks for letting me talk to you about that. I really appreciate it. It was just something that's been on my heart for a long time. And I just wanted to say it. Right? So, but follow up with them. Don't just leave them in the dust and say, all right, so good luck. You're on your own. No, be there for them. Hey, how's it going? Like, I know we talked about that. How's it going? That's what leaders do. And finally, be confident. Everyone is a work in progress. And know that what you say can truly help someone out. All right? So if you like these videos, I've loved teaching them. But if you've liked learning from the home and school one, check out our last one. It's leadership scenarios in a club slash organization. All right? And I'll see you next time.